Eyes right now are on Florida with Hurricane Milton approaching, which is being pretty much talked about as a, a monster storm. Governor DeSantis does a great job of, of having his state ready and responding afterward. There's been a lot of talk right now over FEMA, its role, its current cash flow, and those sorts of things. What are you hearing about FEMA in terms of their response readiness, uh, not only to this storm, but in the aftermath of Helene? We uh, we need to do better in the aftermath of Helene. Um, you know, we, we, we saw Helene coming. Uh, we had uh, about the usual amount of time to prepare. By we, I mean the federal government. Um, a week after the storm, hopefully it's a little better today, we didn't have nearly enough soldiers on the ground helping with the recovery we didn't have enough equipment, for example, uh, uh, military helicopters. I think at the height of our recovery from uh, Katrina, we had about 350 military uh, copters getting people out. Um, about a week after Helene, there were only about 100. And that's especially important in a mountainous area. Uh, I, I mean, it just looks to me like at this juncture that FEMA wasn't ready, and I'm not sure that, that President Biden and Vice President Harris uh, were as focused as they should have been on what was obviously going to be a monster storm. Now we've got another one coming uh, to Florida. I've been following the coverage. I think Governor DeSantis looks to me like uh, he's done a really good job of getting the state ready, but it's just a a monster storm and it's going to have an impact not just on florida but the aftermath will impact the entire country in terms of insurance rates mm. and that's something we know well here in louisiana don't we well we've got a we've got an insurance crisis and the state's going to have to deal with it it's it's flood insurance but it's also homeowners insurance right um i mean if if, if you've got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home um and you and you can afford the mortgage payments and then all of a sudden the insurance your homeowner's insurance raises your premiums to to six eight ten twelve i've heard stores of twenty thousand mm. dollars people can't afford it and they have to carry the insurance because their mortgage company requires it yeah. then we've got another problem with flood insurance everybody ought to carry flood insurance um, I, you know, you can see what's happening in Appalachia. Um, you get Appalachia got 30 inches of rain in 24 hours. If you get 30 inches of rain in 24 hours, you're going to flood. I don't care if you're on top of Pikes Peak. And that's what flood insurance is for. And a lot of people didn't have flood insurance. And part of the problem now is because uh, uh, FEMA revamped, President Biden revamped the the, the flood insurance program and they 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 raise premiums um, to an outrageous level so nobody can afford the product mm -hmm. what what good is insurance if you can't afford it i mean that's that's kind of happened and and it, and that didn't happen in a in a vacuum i mean inflation uh, the 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 um, biden harris inflation they've been inflation machines I was looking at a uh, study early this morning. The average electricity bill in America is up 28%. Mm. That's just electricity. Yeah. And you add into that, you know, food and and rent and interest rates and, and insurance and everything's gone up. And, yeah, the rate of inflation is down. That just means prices aren't rising as quickly as they were. They're still rising. And they're not going to go down, uh, not at the rate that the Biden-Harris administration is going. And, and we, I think it's the biggest uh, issue in these elections. People just, people are paying more to live worse. And, and we've got to deal with it. But uh, frankly, the Biden-Harris administration just doesn't have a plan. They just want to ignore it. But people aren't ignoring it, I can assure you. Senator Nathan here. Uh, I noticed that you, along with the majority of Republican senators, 
uh, sent a letter calling out the Department of Justice for not responding to your concerns about the cases of illegal aliens uh, registering to vote. And I'm curious, if, did you get any response to your inquiry, or, or and what is your major concern? Um, my major con- – look, pe- a lot of people – good question, Nathan. A lot of people have lost confidence in our elections. Uh, we need two rules that will restore the confidence. Number one, we need to go back to having an election day, Nathan, not an election month. Mm. Those those votes, however you vote, they need to be counted on election night. And the second rule, hard pass rule, we need is you have to prove you are who you say you are if if you uh, want to vote. Now the uh, Vice President Harris and President Biden have admitted, freely welcomed somewhere around, as best we can tell, 12 million people into our country illegally. That's like adding four Nebraskas to the Union. And under the law, those folks aren't American citizens. Uh, I don't wish them any ill will, but they can't vote. They, they can, it's illegal for them to vote. And we have tried to pass legislation to tighten up the law, um, my Democratic colleagues won't support it. And President Biden and Vice President Harris and their Justice Department just have not been cooperative at all in terms of enforcing the law. They weren't cooperative at all in, at all in enforcing the law on, on immigration. We have a legal immigration system. And if they would use it, it would work. But instead, they've just, they've just opened the southern border. It's wide open, man. Mm. Uh, we got some calls coming in. Let's go ahead and take a couple of those while we have Senator Kennedy. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Hello. Go ahead. Oh, oh! I was just. I, this is not for Kennedy. I was just on the phone with the Optum. Okay. Uh, well, well. In order. For, we, in order for me to get. Yes, ma'am. We, we we have the senator on. We'll we'll take your call later. Thank you for calling in. Let's try another call here. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, yes, we don't have them. So <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. We've got a situation going on here in the community where Optimum Cable has changed some things with yeah you need a box and all that and so people are <laughs> kind of upset about that right now so <laughs> well i don't blame them yeah. you know I, I don't blame them just one more um, thing to add to the list yeah uh, um it's i know it's frustrating for sure another thing i think senator people are frustrated about and i, I asked senator cassidy about this as well is while you see what the folks in western carolina are dealing with and the seeming lack of response or even an urgency other than regular folks and groups like the Cajun Navy coming in to help, yet we're quick to send money to places like Lebanon. Right now over the weekend it was announced that we're sending millions of dollars there. I think Americans are, a lot of Americans I know anyway, are are really frustrated at this and even maybe growing a little angry about it. Well, they ought to grow a lot of angry about it. Now, um, in the middle of, of us trying to deal with the recovery after Raleen and the recovery that we're going to have to address um, after Hurricane Milton hits Florida, uh, Pro- Vice President Harris announced that she's, I don't know how she has the authority, but she's sending $157 million to help Lebanon. Now, Lebanon is a country north of Israel. Lebanon is run by Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization funded by Iran. We are at war with Hezbollah. Israel is at war with Hezbollah because Hezbollah has been firing missiles into Israel. They're terrorists. Mm -hmm. And they want to destroy Israel, and and Israel is an ally. If, we, if, if the vice president sends $157 million to Lebanon, I can promise you Hezbollah is going to steal it. And they're going to take that money and they're going to use it to buy weapons to try to kill us. 
I mean, there's no reward for being stupid. Uh, you don't send your enemy uh, money in the middle of fighting them. I, it's it's just so self evident, um, and I don't know why the vice president would do that. I don't know why she would make this announcement in the middle of us scrambling uh, to to try to help the people in Appalachia and in Tennessee and Georgia and Florida and 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 North Carolina and in some cases South Carolina. It 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 just shows you how tone deaf the federal government is and frankly how tone deaf vice president harris and president biden are i I mean i I was i I was appalled when when i heard that i thought uh, it was i said it's got to be a mistake okay it's got to be a mistake well it wasn't a mistake now the vice president president has backed off on that um but it's i mean there's no question that she was serious when she did it and 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 the only thing i can can figure is that she's in the middle of an election and she was trying to to get the votes of the people who hate israel Hmm. um and i don't i don't understand any of it but i know it's wrong well, Senator, we appreciate your time. We know how busy you are, especially this time of year. So thank you for calling in today. It's always good to catch up with you. Thanks, gentlemen. All thank right, you, sir. Senator John.